Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new to the channel, thank you for tuning in. Today we're going to be talking about a Mercury Marauder that I purchased that had been in a police chase. Yes, um, now when I bought the car, I had already knew it had been in a police chase, and that's because the car was actually in uh, in pretty bad shape. It looked like it had been in a police chase. So we're gonna be I'm gonna be telling you guys about the story um, with the police chase and give you a little insight on. Um, me bringing the car back to life and this is the car right here i'm gonna um it'll be in the video so i'll show you the actual mercury marauder now this is how it looked after i fixed it back um it did still have some signs that had been in a police chase like the uh the corner of the bumper where it was um hit when they did the the pit maneuver and then you still had some holes in the car from some action after the chase had ended so Let's get into it. So for the sake of this video, we're gonna call the guy that I bought the car from. We're gonna call him Tim. And uh, and so one day Tim calls me and Tim is like, the police is behind me. I'm like, well, you know me, I'm a law abiding citizen. So I said, well, Tim, you no, know, just go ahead and pull over, man, and uh, see what they want. And so Tim is like, he, he, he's just not, Tim is one of those people, nah, it, it, he wasn't gonna do that. So. Uh, Tim was like, no, I'm, I'm not going to pull over. Uh, he's going to keep going. But I'm, I'm like, Tim, man, just go ahead and pull the car over. So now in this particular area that Tim is driving in, there is a stretch of highway that I'm talking about is, is straight and it's straight for like three to four miles easy, just straight flat highway. Now, of course, the officers know this in that area, so they actually block that stretch of highway off to make sure that if Tim was to try to come down there, um, that he wouldn't be able to come down that road because if he did, the Mercury Marauder, um, it it was tuned and he had some some stuff on it that the car was very capable of doing well over you know 140, 150 miles, 150 miles per hour. So that you know some some high speed. Now we're talking about a story from years ago, so it's not like they had the chargers and things like they have now to actually keep up with the um, cars like that back then. So back then they only had the regular Crown Vic. I think, yeah, back then it was really still only the Crown Victoria and the uh, Chevy Impala is what they had back then. So those two cars would, yeah, would definitely would have had trouble keeping up with the Mercury Murata. But let's go ahead and continue with the story. So Tim, he, uh, he calls him back again and Tim is like, well, uh, if you can meet me, I'm going to come down such and such way. I'm like, well, I'm not, you know, yeah, I am not comfortable with that, but I like, all right, I'll see what I can do. I'll try to meet you. So, um, Tim, uh, as I go out to meet Tim, you can hear the sirens, you can hear the, you know, just the exhaust of the Mercury Marauder. Now, Mercury Marauder, they did a fantastic job with the sound of the Mercury Marauder, uh, especially when you hear it, like when you're giving it some gas, it sounds amazing. But anyway, so this particular road, stretch of road, I, uh, as I'm pulling out to turn onto the road, you see uh, Tim shoot by, you see about eight to 10 police cars right behind him. Now, why Tim decides to come down this particular road, I don't know because this is it's like a almost uh, neighborhood style, but it goes into like a loop. And it's almost only one way in and one way out unless you take like a side road to put you on another street. But mainly we're just gonna say you're going into a dead end because there's no way you're gonna maneuver your way out of this loop. Um, so as Tim is driving, uh, he's he's coming to a curve um, and you have to slow down. You, you There's no way you're gonna take this curve over I would say 50 miles per hour, it's, it's too sharp. So as Tim slows down, uh, one officer pits the uh, Mark Murata and it spins out. Now, of course, once the car spins out, another officer, now I'm sitting here watching all of this uh, from my vehicle and as Tim spins out, uh, the other car, other police car, he pulls up, boom, hits the Mark Murata in the front. Now, it doesn't end there because what happens is the um, officer that runs into the front of the Mercury Marauder, he hops out, uh, weapon drawn, and he starts firing. Not only does he start firing, the other officers start firing too. So now Tim is sitting in the car. He did have his hands up, no weapon, and uh, they're shooting the car up. All right, so long story short, Tim did get uh, struck a few times, but he was okay. 
um, the car was pretty much a total loss. They shot everything from the hood to the windows out. Um, the side doors had bullet holes in it. Everything on that car was pretty much, um, yeah, destroyed um, for the most part. Even the even the dashboard had holes in it, the seats. So you're probably wondering, why would you buy the car? Well, Tim actually got the car back. He, uh, he did have to replace the front bumper, the... Um, he did replace the windows. It needed a new windshield, needed a new back window, uh, side windows. I think the car only actually had two windows that were left in it, and that was one on the passenger side, and then the uh, driver side back window were the only ones left on the car. Um, if you could probably tell from the video, those are the only two that had tint on them, so that's how you know those were the only ones that weren't replaced. Even the sunroof on the car was blown out, um, so that had to be replaced too. So. Uh, he started, he, he put the windows back in the car. He had those replaced. He put the front bumper back on. And and that's about it. it the rest of it, it, it was still in, uh, yeah, in bad shape. So now with the market Marauder was only made for two years. So they only made like 11,000, somewhere in there. And if you had this silver, which uh, it came in black, blue, silver, and burgundy. If you had a, a blue silver or burgundy it was even rare to see that uh model because most of the mercury marauders were made in black so i'm like well it's still a rare car uh the it only had like 90,000 miles it had less than 100,000 miles on it so it was, it's it was it's hard to find them and if you fix it back if i could get it at a good price then i could fix it back and it still be worth um having so me and Tim, we worked the deal out, Tim. Um, after he started fixing it, he still didn't, he kind of didn't want it anymore. So we came upon a price and I was able to purchase the uh, Mercury Marauder from Tim. And then I took the car and started to uh, get it repaired back. Now, um, from what I had to do to the car, it had to have a, he did also put a hood on it, but it was a match, match color. So I had to, uh, it was a lot of body work. I think I spent over, five or six thousand dollars and that was on the low side that's with shopping around four prices i had to get to one shop they wanted three thousand just to fix some holes in one of the uh fenders and to uh fix the door that had a dent in it from the um pursuit and they wanted like just three thousand just for that portion of the vehicle which was outrageous because we still had to do the rest of the vehicle and it needed to be painted again so this, uh, I ended up finding a shop that would do it for like five to six, and I ended up having them do that. And I was able to get the, it needed a new header panel to host the headlights in, it needed that, that it was busted up from the accident. Um, new lights, new header panel, the fog lights for the bumper, because he replaced the bumper, but the bumper didn't have the lights, the new uh, fog lights in it, so I had to replace that. Some wiring, uh, all the body panels that had uh, holes in them had to be, filled and replaced now of course on the back door we they feel the outside but of course the uh, trim that the door touches when it closes it still had a hole but i didn't worry about that part and the uh the mercury Mariah, this one was a fully loaded one it had the wing on the back well this um the lip on the back on the trunk that was that had a hole in it um i just happened i just took that off and left it now the back bumper on the mercury marauder which is super hard to find really couldn't find one and if you did find one you're talking about 14 to 1500 just for that bumper because they're super hard to find remember there's only 11,000 of these cars are made most of them are already probably somewhere in the, in the salvage yard and so it had a big dent in it and we was able to uh heat that portion of the corner of that bumper up and uh, pop it back out now it wasn't smooth it still had a couple you know uh waves in it but it was good enough um to work and you know not too noticeable and for 1500 it was great it could work and so i started to uh you know repair the car now the dash it, it had a hole in it so we just did uh just a cover over the dash and um a couple of the interior pieces had holes in it nothing major so i actually ended up driving the car i put over 90,000 miles on the car before i actually sold it it was still running strong um and it, and it ended up being a great car. I did have to do the sunroof. The sunroof was another major uh, expense because uh, Ford 
doesn't just sell you the glass. Uh, they they have to sell you the whole mechanism with the glass, which is like two grand. And now I actually found a company that could uh, measure it and cut it out, but it still was an expensive fix because they had you had to take it in and have them measure it. They had to order it, and, and, and they had a confusion with the ordering and all that stuff, and they had to bring it back and put it in. So that was a headache of its own, just getting the sunroof put back into the uh, vehicle. But I was glad that I saved the vehicle because at the end of the day, it was still a good vehicle. And like I said, you know, most likely would have ended up in the junkyard. And so, but getting it at the right price, you know, I was able to buy it, and fix it back. I spent a little bit more than I wanted to on it, but overall it came out to be a great car. I was able to put over 90, like I said, 90,000 miles on the car. Uh, no trouble at all with it. And it was a nice car. It still got compliments after it was fixed back up. People still compliment the car and it ended up in a great car. So I sold it to a, a, a guy uh, who came from out of town to buy it. And he bought the car. And like three or four years later, when I went to the uh, area um, that this guy was from, who had bought the car, I actually seen the car on the road. So he was still driving that same car. So now the car has at least, at least over 200 and some thousand miles on it. Cause when I sold to him, I think it had like 189, somewhere in there when I sold it. So for that to be three to four years later, um, that car was still on the road. and But that's how reliable the car was. I mean, it was just, you know, I, I, I bought it, fixed it back, and I was able to um, enjoy it and turn around and sell it. But that's the story with this Mercury Marauder. Thank you guys for tuning in and watching the video. Um, hit the like button. Leave a comment down below and let me know what you guys think. But other than that, thank you for watching. I will catch you on the next video.